Chris can. Hi. Hi, there's a bit of a delay. So le let me ask you, because everybody's interested in the new Russia relationship. When you say that Trump's policy is phenomenally close to President Putin's and that even elements of Trump's speech mirrored some of Putin's speech, what precisely do you mean? What are you hoping for? <laughs> Actually, they, they seem to be very, both, uh, very pragmatic, both of them. They uh, point out as a main, uh, as a main objective to protect national interests. We've heard uh, Mr. Trump uh, mentioning, uh, mentioning a uh, overwhelming priority of America's national interests, and the same uh, is being proclaimed by President Putin. He is very consistent in that, saying that Russia's and uh, Russia's people's prosperity and their uh, national interests are the main objective and the main priority. But at the same time, they both uh, expressed a readiness uh, to develop good relationship with other countries in the world as far as third countries are ready to go. Mm -hmm. So, and this is a really, this is a very good, very positive coincidence in my opinion. Um, Dmitry Peskov, it is absolutely a given that Donald Trump was the Kremlin's favorite candidate to the point that we've even seen, you know, deputy in the Duma, Mr. Nikonov, who, who talked to me the other day, um, basically congratulate members of the Duma, saying this is your victory, congratulations to you. Sergei Markov, who is, as you know, a pro-Kremlin analyst, says that he anticipates uh, Donald Trump having much more support for uh, the Kremlin, for, for the uh, President Putin's agenda. Is that what you are hoping? I would like to remind you that President Putin did his best in order to stay neutral in this story, despite the fact that personally he was playing an overwhelming role quite unexpectedly for us in the uh, American election campaign. But nonetheless, he never, he never pointed out his favorite candidate, and he was very careful uh, saying that, that Russia would uh, welcome any choice of American people and we cannot afford interfering into uh, America's domestic affairs. You know, uh, again, President Putin is very consistent in that, and he uh, he's strictly against someone's interfering in our domestic affairs, and he's very careful in order not to do it in in, in the domestic affairs of third countries, including the United States. But let me so uh, in our country, according um, yes. So mm -hmm. well, I just want to follow up because yeah, please, because President ahead. Putin did actually say that it was in the public interest and a public service that all these Democrat emails were released. And uh, Sergei Markov, that analyst who I was saying, said, maybe we helped a bit with WikiLeaks. So that's from your own side giving a nod and a wink to accusations by the American intelligence community that actually Russia, in some form or fashion, was behind this. Um, and, and there is motivation, as you say. You know, President Putin believes that Donald Trump's policy is more aligned with him than Hillary Clinton and had and, and actually try to defend Donald Trump against criticism at the United Nations. Well, uh, no one expects that that uh, relationship will, will improve in a fortnight between Moscow and Washington. We have a very heavy burden of, uh, of disagreements on our shoulders. But nonetheless, uh, um, uh, if our two leaders, uh, I mean the current uh, Russia's leader, President Putin, and uh, President-elect Trump are wise enough to, uh, to have a political will to talk to each other and to try to solve problems not by confronting each other, not by, by using, let's say, language of sanctions or, or other illogic things hurting both sides, uh, then we'll really have a chance to at least to, to talk and to try uh, to solve the problems being uh, constructed, being constructed, then we'll have a hope at least. Because what we have currently is a, is a very lousy relationship, uh, let's say a minimum possible level of our relationship for last decades. Mm -hmm. um, can I ask you, because you mentioned a few of these issues, um, you know, Donald Trump has threatened to tear up or renegotiate or, or, or get rid of certain deals that the United States made. And one of them is with Russia's help, which was the Iran nuclear deal. Do you think it was the worst deal ever, as Donald Trump says, and that it should be 
torn up or somehow metaphorically, you know, cast into the dustbin of negotiations? Is that what Russia would like to see? Well, Russia would like, uh, would like to be constructive anyway. And Russia is ready to take into account concerns of its partners. But, uh, of course, we feel ourselves in a right to expect that our partners are also ready to take into account our current uh, concerns. And uh, we are very strict in fulfilling our international obligations. Uh, Russia is extremely careful and uh, is a very responsible uh, international player in that sense. Uh, but uh, at the same time, we're, we're, we're insisting all the time that our counterparts are fulfilling their obligations. Mm -hmm. so ask, it's, it's a very important balance. And then, uh, yes. No, no, sorry. I don't mean to interrupt you. But um, what about Syria? Obviously, you've had a great deal of, of diplomacy, but a great deal of acrimony with the United States over Syria. Donald Trump seems to suggest he's much more aligned with the Russian view of Syria. So what are you expecting to be the end result in Syria under a new American president? Well, uh, I would say that um, Syria is, is, is a burning issue and we cannot afford a, a pause of a couple of months. So we have a couple of months ahead and we'll continue to work with an acting uh, administration in Washington and Putin will continue to work with uh, with uh, Mr. Obama uh, we cannot afford waiting for a couple of months what is that? and what we have to do now we have to ensure that that I've yes we have to ensure that promises to differ terrorists from uh, from other opposition will be uh, realized into life uh, but so after that after that of course what we expect on Syria is a real cooperation not just exchange of information. This is not sufficient. And this, unfortunately, thus, we cannot be effective in combating terror there in Syria. So you say you have these two months before the next president takes office. What is your aircraft carrier doing that? Many, many people feel that President Putin felt that there was going to be a Hillary Clinton victory, wanted to get in with the aircraft, character, uh, uh, aircraft carrier and deliver a, a final blow to eastern Aleppo. Is that still your plan? Well, you know, Russian Air Force is continuing to perform its duties uh, in order to support um, uh, activities of Syrian army uh, against terrorists. And uh, this operation is being continued, although in accordance with the order of uh, Russian chief commander, President Putin, they are still holding fire and they're, they're not using military jets in order to bomb uh, terrorist uh, targets in eastern Aleppo. But uh, in general, operation is going on. Can I ask you finally, you have said, and I just wanted you to confirm for me, that Russian experts were in contact with some members of Trump's staff during the campaign. Just describe your contacts with the Trump campaign. But listen, uh, uh, Russian experts are in uh, permanent contact with their counterparts with experts uh, on uh, Russia-US relationship with uh, uh, specialists in politology. Uh, it's a normal exchange of views. It's a normal exchange of visits. And then, of course, among those people, uh, there could have been someone uh, interconnected with the election campaign. But again, I, I, I just want to repeat that, that, that uh, we cannot speak about any official context or context uh, orchestrated or, or initiated from Kremlin. We haven't had any official contacts with them. All right, lots more to discuss. We hope you'll join us as this transition uh, goes on.